There was an earlier, uh, this is going back maybe a decade, there was a fear of, you know, I started out watching puppy videos and then 15 minutes later I've signed up for ISIS. Right. Right. And most studies that looked into that did not actually bear out the idea that totally. there's a quick or, or even long-term radicalization algorithm that is being widely applied or used or people are falling into. It's people seek out the stuff they want to seek out, and the algorithm just helps them seek it out more. Yeah, it's, it is it is fascinating to me the moment that the algorithm kind of became this villain, that yeah. it kind of divorced from the people, you know, mostly end users who are demanding or, or wanting certain right. types of content. Yeah, um, and it's math. Algorithms are math. When you're yeah. mad at it, you're mad at math, and it, it's silly. Well, then I'm a, I'm anti-algorithm now. Yeah, I mean, I don't who, like math either. So yeah, that's fair. I, I <laughs> cashed out of I think algebra two and trigonometry, and, <laughs> like the Reagan era. So, um, you uh, write also that regimes that run age verification through the government would allow prosecutors to make children federal criminals if they lie about their age. Oh, this was fun. So I forgot about this one just mm -hmm. because it was only in one bill, and that okay. was the Schatz bill, the Protecting Kids mm -hmm. Online. And I do respect Schatz a lot. I think he's trying to do the right thing. And I think he's – I don't think he's doing it right, but I think he's trying. And mm -hmm. a lot of what I've seen that he's saying, I, I kind of respect more than I do from other elected officials. Mm -hmm. But it, it's really bad. I mean, when you run – when you lie to the government, like, that can be a federal crime. So well, I looked into this, and it's whether um, – So if you say, I am not a robot, and you are a robot when you're checking uh, – I wonder. Uh, I wonder yeah. if you can prosecute the, the robots. The robots, you know. Somebody's got to take care of them. They're a problem. He thought – maybe as a better way to protect data, that yeah. uh, it would be better for the government to handle age verification. Mm -hmm. um, but that means if kids lie to that entity, whether it's run through a government contractor mm -hmm. or an agency, you are you can be a federal yeah. criminal because you're lying to the government. And sure, we don't prosecute kids a lot, but like go government sometimes starts enforcing stuff that it didn't used to enforce. And you don't want to yeah. add a new law to the books that makes it possible for kids to become federal criminals for uh, trying to log into YouTube. That's that's not wise policy. Right. At the same time, services should be free to kind of demand whatever they want. Sure, people, yeah. People, right? Yeah, no, I agree with it. I don't like when they want to, a lot yeah. of my information, but if mm -hmm. that's what they want, they can, you know, suffer the business consequences. I was, uh, you know, I uh, for people watching this on video, they may have seen I was drinking out of a 7-Eleven cup, and I went to 7-Eleven to get coffee this morning, and they asked for my phone number. And I was like, no, I don't want to give your phone number. And I was going to walk away. <laughs> like if they were like, you can't buy coffee unless you give your phone number. And I, and they were like, OK. So, oh, good, good. yeah, it was, it's interesting, <laughs> though, like what, you know, and I understand why they're doing that. Yeah. And I also understand the power of getting more personal information. You know, it does allow the Internet. I mean, one of the things that sites can do more than regular businesses is tailor more yeah. stuff directly to you. But, you know, that's a negotiation. Right. Totally. Yeah. And and you have some say there and it's yeah. not mandatory. And some companies realize that users don't want that. So they try to step away. With age verification uh, systems, and you, you mentioned Neopets. Uh, <laughs> my younger son, I guess, was really big into Club Penguin, which was... Oh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. And it no longer exists. I believe it was... <laughs> Dis it ultimately was owned by Disney or something like that. But it was kind of a social media you know, a walled garden, you know, a very walled garden for kids to just to do stuff and interact and have, you know, online adventures. Were there were there services that did a, or do a really good job, you know, that are directed towards kids that protect that? And, you know, are there examples to be learned there from how we might change the way kids interact with the Internet? Yeah, I like Neopets a lot. I yeah. actually made a few internet friends and my friends were into mm -hmm. it. And like, I forget the names of them. And they're dead now. They're all dead. <laughs> I like haven't fed them in so long. Yeah. They're like, I, have, I haven't even dug their You brains. better hope they're dead. Yeah. Because otherwise oh my gosh, they're going to be really angry. Yeah. But I like the way Neopets operated. Mm -hmm. I always felt pretty safe on there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they could have actually done some more nudges. Like, hey, remember not to give up personal information to mm -hmm. strangers or whatever. But overall, they did good. <laughs> but Club Penguin was a, is a really good example because I remember mm -hmm. the big trend of trying to get banned from Club Penguin. <laughs> but like they did a yeah. good job of banning people be being inappropriate and then it became a meme. So it was a bit of a Barbara Streisand effect. Right. Um, I know Instagram wanted to do Instagram kids and then everyone flipped out over it so mm -hmm. they couldn't. But I actually think that's a good idea. Some yeah. like safer areas where you still warn kids about stuff but maybe mm -hmm. there's a little bit 
less risk for them. I think and I guess Amazon done. has, uh, you know, on, on Kindle Fires and stuff. Like yeah. they have certain kinds of, you know, again, they're kind of like playgrounds, right? And yeah. playgrounds are good because kids are safe in them, but then they also can draw creeps, right? Yeah. Because, hey, there's only kids there. But why, why is it... What what's the role of the companies here? Uh, you know, broadly, people who are offering goods and services yeah. have they fallen down on their job to you know kind of proactively preempt this type of legislation? Um, I you know, know yeah. Or, or what do they need to be doing better? Yeah, I think the big thing is that they should be coordinating to make parental controls easier. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, I think that's the big lesson here. Um, I'm not sure it would have stopped the legislation even, but yeah. I know parents are sometimes overwhelmed by all the choices, but it would be nice if parents had like one set of controls that made it a little bit easier because mm -hmm. you can't have device level filters, um, platform level filters, yeah. uh, app store filters, but it, it would be nice to give something parents to, to parents that's a little bit easier here just to manage, just to show them how mm -hmm. stuff works because just like with any technology, it gets complex. Like I'm online way too much, so I know mm -hmm. how all this stuff works, right. but make it easier for parents. I'm not sure that that uh, companies have exactly failed, but they mm -hmm. really could be doing better. And here. it's it clear part of this is a kind of a public relations war. Because, yeah. you know, I know in the, uh, again, going back to the 90s, uh, when cable TV didn't really become a fully national phenomenon until the late 80s and the early 90s. And then under Bill Clinton, um, uh, Janet Reno, the attorney general, went on a jihad against cable TV because it was showing too much sex and violence. And yeah. it's like, you know, it obviously wasn't, but, um, you know, there, uh, out of this, these sets of concerns came things like the V chip, yeah. which, you know, was a technology mandated into every new TV. Um, and then the idea was that we're going to rate TV programs and then, you know, parents will set their TVs to certain levels so the kids can't block it. Nobody used it. Right. And I guess my point is that there's nothing industry could have done. That was a tidal wave coming. Yeah. Because, but they could do, you know, it seems like companies now could do a better job of combating the negativity. Yeah. Um, but they seem, they're part of the problem, aren't they? <clears throat> Excuse me, both in terms of uh, not, you know, not seeming to care, um, maybe, maybe not, but um, also colluding with the government. I mean, one of yeah. the things that is very different now than the 90s is in the wake of revelations about Twitter and Facebook and other companies, really not just relying on the government or rolling over for the government, but asking the government to say, hey, will you moderate our content? For yeah. Us? Oh, it's disgusting. I mean, it's regulatory capture and they know mm -hmm. what they're doing violates the First Amendment, but mm -hmm. it benefits their business. I do understand on a level like you're a business, like your job isn't always to fight for freedom. But at the very least, you shouldn't be proactively fighting yeah. against freedom. Um, I get if government pressures you too much, you might have to roll over a bit. But rolling over is different than what a lot of these companies are doing. Mm. I was very grossed out by like how Snapchat and Facebook were just like, oh, please regulate us and mm -hmm. put it sort of on other people, not exactly us. And it's just silly. Um, Snapchat, I also personally have never had a lot of respect for. They used mm. to tell politicians to go on Snapchat and that's where the kids are. Yeah. They knew that's not where you're going to reach people for politics. Right. That was just not ethical business. 